but I've definitely never seen one kind of near my house. So that was pretty nice. cool. Yeah, that is cool. Brown bear or black bear? Uh, luckily, uh, a black bear. We don't have the grizzlies around here. That would um, that would be more alarming. I thought the, the black bear was really super cool. <laughs> Anybody li live out where there's been bear country? Not oh, so yeah, much. we got a lot down here. You do, Donnie? I, I would assume black bears there, huh? Oh, yeah, we're out in the Smokies up here. We got a lot of urban bears here. Yep. Pretty cool. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen too many bears in my life, so that was pretty neat. I didn't see his whole body. His like head was sticking up, you know, by the road, and he was just staring at me. And there's definitely a much bigger head than you'd see on, you know, a raccoon or something that you know I kind of expected to see there. So that was super cool. David, one of our inspectors sent us a picture about three weeks ago, one in his truck. Are you kidding me? Wow. <laughs> I'll see. I'll see if I can find the picture for you. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see that. That's I think cool. it's on Facebook if you just stop the, the business page. Man, uh, that's amazing. So the Smokies, you guys got some a, a lot of bears around there, huh? Yeah. They yeah. say there's about 3,500 bears up there. Wow. Jeez, who knew? That's pretty cool. I mean, that's in the whole park. Yeah, yeah. Welcome, everybody. We got, uh, let's see, Brett on here. We got Wayne. Nice, Wayne. And um, Martin, uh, this is kind of cool, you guys. We're getting subscribers. Uh, Martin's out of California, but also does some of the, these the balcony inspections that are going on out there. And Wayne is uh, sort of our RV guy. So if you ever know anybody that needs help with RV templates or RV inspection stuff, uh, Wayne's kind of, Wayne's a good resource there. Nice, nice. And we got Tim on here who just knows more about everything than anybody. <laughs> Good, nice to have you on, Tim. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. So. I'm also an RV guy. <laughs> it's George. Hi, George. Good to oh, know. George, you are cool. Nice, George. Yeah, so you guys are able to meet. Uh, I think that's right. Welcome, George. Nice to have you, man. Yeah, uh, you. glad you could make it. Um, Thank you. It struck me, you know, we could, I, I didn't set this one up ahead of time, but like, I, I never know how many people are going to show up to these, but in the future, Wayne, like if we start getting more like RV people want to show up, I think I can create little rooms and we could like break off and have different rooms in these meetups if we wanted to have like an RV section and, you know, it's, uh, there's also, we get some people that are like brand new to Scribeware and then other people that are asking, like, I've had some people be like, I don't even understand what you guys are talking about. <laughs> you know, when there's like veteran scribers talking in our sort of Scribeware language. So anyway, uh, one of these days we'll, we can start to try to break them up more. I think Charlie and I tried it once. You can do like different rooms, which it's a little bit confusing if um, Zoom wasn't confusing enough to begin with. <laughs> uh, but anyway, welcome everybody. Uh, so I was my loose plan today was to kind of review the mobile app, and I don't know if that would be helpful, but the, uh, it was kind of a rough idea. Um, but before I do that, does anybody have any questions or things that I could help? You know, part of these is like these are a good opportunity to learn from each other. So if someone's stuck on something, you know, I can like help you get unstuck, and then we uh, everybody learns from it. So if anybody's coming here loaded with some questions, I'd be happy to tackle those. George, what do you, what do you got? So I'd like to learn about how to do um, inspector only comments in my template. In nice. the template that I have right now, it has, you know, view favorites and view common. But I really liked on the demos that you did the idea that I could just have to check a box and and throws it right in. That's a great thing to go over. Let's, why don't we do that? And we'll just uh, it'll be reviewed for some people and totally new. So if you're brand new to Scribeware. Um, let me share my screen with you. And um, building out template stuff is not something you do on mobile. That's kind of more of like a desktop enterprise. I need to move a few things around so I can see all you guys. Cool. Um, so uh, I'm on desktop and I'm inside a report. This is actually, I made a copy of a job that I did this morning. So I used my copy report button up here. If you don't know about that, that's actually a really sweet little button right there because you can 
copy any report. So whenever I do a reinspection, for example, I make a copy of the old report. That way I've got one that I haven't messed with and then a, a second one that's an exact copy. So, uh, and then once you build a copy, you could go ahead and in this case, I removed like client name and uh, some personal information stuff. And then um, you can come up here and give it another date. Like if you're doing a reinspection, you could change the date to today's date if you wanted to on there. So that's how I do reinspections. So I copied a report. And now let's go answer the question of how you build an inspector note. Uh, so I'll, I'll kind of review here. Like we're in the exterior chapter. And within the chapter, we have sections. So I'm in my siding and trim section. And then the first two are designed to print in the report. So I'm describing the trim material and the siding material. Everything below there in italics is not ever going to show up in the report. They're just links to get me things that will show up in the report, right? So if I want to have localized rot repairs, I can just click that and get my comment. The comment will show up in the report, but the localized rot repairs stays hidden. So these are what we call inspector-only notes, and they're really cool because what they give you is... To me, there's probably never been a better report style than a checkbox report it, when it comes to the speed and convenience for a home inspector. <laughs> I mean, all your things are just sitting there and you go like, click, 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 right? Um, to me, that I never wanted to present a checkbox report to the client, so I kind of wanted a more narrative style. But the, the idea of the inspector notes is you get the best of both worlds. So that's why they're, they're good. Um, so let me show you how you build one. It's kind of a two-step process. The first is we would want a comment that we would tie to it. So let's author a comment here, and we'll call this test um, inspector only note. And I'll actually go ahead and I'm going to edit in library. So I'm going to go to the three dots over here and I'll edit in library to add this to library. The reason is I'm going to give it a label and I'm just going to put three, four threes in. But if I use a number, I don't have that many numbers in my library. So it'll help me just kind of cut through the clutter and find everything. This label, just so you know, will not print in the report. The label is only for the home inspector to see. So just a few little tips, like I will sometimes hide codes and stuff in my label. If I want to remember, like, you know, if I think I could end up in a fight with a builder and I need the code reference, then I'll just kind of hide the that code there. Or, or you can just label it like, you know, the roof's dead or whatever you want. You can put a label there and only you'll see that. So we'll go ahead and add this silly comment. And then, of course, if you want, you could change the modifier. We could call this an HOA item. And if I update the library, it'll remember it like that. So I should be able to delete that and recall it again. So I've got a comment to tie to it. So now let's go ahead and we're going to edit the section. We're going to turn it green and we'll build, a, maybe I'll build something all the way at the bottom. We'll build a whole new thing here. So we'll edit it and we'll add new is what we want to do. If I, if I wanted to add something like up here, I could click on this pen and add another thing to this whole group. Um, but I'll just go ahead and we'll like, we'll just do something totally new here. So we'll call this inspector notes uh, test. So, and you can obviously build a big list. You can have multiple different things here. You could keep going and I'll just add this field. So cool. We have a little field here and I can click on these. So that's sort of a good first step. But let's go ahead and edit this and let's actually connect stuff to it. So I want to connect something to test. So that I like to use suggested observations. Everybody following me okay? Am I moving too fast or we're good. Cool. So suggested observations is down here at the bottom left. And what that does is it lets me kind of say, okay. I want to connect something to test. So I choose test. And by the way, if I go previous here, you could have it connect to both things if you want. So, but we'll just do one here, test. Uh, and then I can find it here with the keyword search. So I can hit 333. It's sifted through all my stuff and rather quickly found um, uh, this HOA comment. So we'll grab that. And then I just hit save and save again. And now I've built a little, let me delete this. And when we bring it back, it's orange. And that's what we wanted to, to have it say, test. George, did that, did that help? You think you could reproduce that? And I, I, I'm recording this, so I'll do my best to uh, actually put it up on Facebook for everybody. <laughs> no, that was great. I, um, I'm not sure I'd be able to do you it so fast, but 
watch it again for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why it helps. To, and um, I'll just show you guys, just so everybody knows, why don't I bring up, you guys see my Google page here? You guys see yeah. that? Okay. Okay. Uh, let's go to the Scribeware website. Uh, and training. So on our website, if you go into training and Scribeware training docs, we have this black thing here that is like, this is not all of our videos. So if you want to really get good at Scribeware, I would like bookmark this. And then I would also join our YouTube channel. Um, and those would be our two best places to kind of like find all of our videos. I definitely, you know, I'm completely overwhelmed with things to do <laughs> in a perfect world. When I post a video there, I also like put stuff in here, but I get behind, you know, so this winter will be my chance to kind of get caught up on directions. You will find some old videos here that are not perfect. It's actually one of my reasons I wanted to do a mobile app review is I might be able to recycle it and kind of update our mobile thing. But this is really cool. So everything is is pretty well organized here. So I have getting started, like overview. Uh, there's some desktop basics here, like here's how chapters and sections work, the left side bar. You know, I, I feel like a lot of these intro things are more intuitive and you might be able to figure them out. So that the deeper you go, we get into like advanced desktop. So like how you set up your summary page and uh, global keyword searches and right here, inspector only notes. So if you click on that, like this video will show you how to build those, George, if you get stuck. So, um, and the other cool thing is this has a search button up here. So you may not find everything, but if you typed in, uh inspector only note uh inspector only note for blazing fast comments we could choose that and that like that's gonna be right here and most of these are kind of yeah. how to you know so they're gonna like teach you how to do these things so um oh we got uh jim on here good to see you man <laughs> um uh, so is that helpful guys is that, you know, just, that's a good resource for like, you can always kind of scan through and use this search term. And there, there's even like, if you're interested in doing CSS on your own, uh, which, uh, we have him here, we're getting a little noise on here. Why are you just some kitty? Let's see. I think it's Joey. I'm just going to mute. What? Joey, I don't know if you're listening. I, 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 I don't think you're talking to us. So, oh, good. I think she muted. Thanks. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, where was I going? Um, oh, I know CSS. Like, uh, where is it? Into the weeds, customizing the look of the report. And I actually spent uh, Charlie Buell helped quite a bit with this. But there's all kinds of different CSS that we've just sort of given to you that if you want to like cut and paste that in, uh, you can actually grab this. So you see how Charlie built out these slides to show, you know, if you wanted to add lines, for example, to your, your cover page, he has some CSS to do it. And then we like provide the, the CSS right here. So you can just copy and paste it. And I'll show you where you paste it into in Scribeware. Um, in settings and advanced, uh, there's a place that you can, all this little garbledy gook here is custom CSS. And these are just little changes that I've made in the report. Uh, this is what Tim Trickle can help you guys with. If you get stuck and want some help, Tim's got sort of a consulting business and he helps out a lot of scribers, but you can also figure out a lot of this stuff on your own. You can't really break anything here. We have a, warn a warning of like, be careful, but worst case scenario, you can always just delete all this and you're right back where you started from. So it, if you find this kind of thing interesting, <laughs> it's actually pretty fun. You can like copy and paste bits of code in and sort of play around and get different colors and fonts and things. So that's uh, custom CSS. Sorry, George, I got a little distracted, I a, but uh, I have a quick question. Yeah. Yeah. Shoot. Um, what you just did uh, where you get the comments, you can I mean, you you selected something to hide the comments, right? Um, in that one page. Oh, uh, you mean th this whole thing right here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a good question. We actually didn't. I'm looking at this now. We didn't get all the way through that. So right now we actually we built a link, but it's actually not an inspector note because you see how it's bold. That's going to yeah. print in the report. So thank you. That's a super good question. Yeah. So let's go ahead and edit the section and we'll um, click on this. Inspector only notes don't show in report. 
And then is that also a way, say I wanted to add a table or a list of items like elements for um, multiple elements in balcony inspections. And I wanted to list the number of balconies versus rails versus, you know, all those elements and count the numbers. Is there a way I can have those listed and then add the number for each element? Yes. Talk Okay. to Tim Trickle. <laughs> okay. uh, I, no, Tim's, Tim's kind of our resident guy that if you're really interested in tables, Tim has done some work to kind of make that happen. The Okay. table functionality is not like just native in Scribeware at the moment. We would we would like to do that. It Yeah. it's a pretty big change. It involves rebuilding our text editor, which we can do, but is like a, a bit like getting you know teeth removed. <laughs> Yeah. so it's not like uh, top on our list at the moment. It's a bit of Okay. a nice to have, but but yeah, Tim can help you with that. But So. I can also just list a few items and then just add the number of each element, right? As far Well, yeah, as I mean, you could build your own kind of, you know, you could, for example, there would be several ways you could do it. So by the way, see how when I made that change, now this is uh, in italics, whereas before it was, uh, if I uncheck inspector note, it's bold. So now it'll show up in the report. And if I go in there and check inspector only note, it'll stay hidden and it's in italics. Okay. Everybody with me there? That That's a key thing. Like if you want these things to stay hidden, You use uh, inspector only notes right here. And again, the the comment will show up in the report, but all of this little, this, all, all of these things up here stay hidden. So it, this is a really great way to build a fast, a mobile friendly template where you're just going click, 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 because you, you can, you just touch this and you get your comment. Okay. Hey, Dylan, Um, yeah. can you make that comment inspector only as well? Like, You say can. you want to have a. Yeah. So uh, you want me to show you how you do that? Yes. That's a Thanks. super good question. So right now, this has actually changed. So this is an important milestone. This is different than how it used to be, and it's much better. It caused a bit of disturbance in the force while we changed it here. But so in my template, what I've built is I have an inspector only note modifier down here. And so now when I change this to an inspector only note, um, uh, Just get rid of this. Um, see how it says not included in report. So now I have a note that is truly just for me. Like, and it could, and I have some of these in my template. So if I go to in my template to, um, uh, let's see, fuel distribution and propane tanks, uh, propane tank clearances. You know, I have just, I can't remember these. The cool thing about these inspector notes, if you put illustrations in, is if I decided that I wanted to use this as a repair comment, um, I could, you know, let's say this weren't even here, you can actually drag them in, which is kind of cool. So you could build inspector only notes like to a deck comment, for example, and have it populate a bunch of deck illustrations that you could drag back into a comment. as needed. I'll show you that technique actually, as I do that in, um, let me get rid of this, in my uh, stair section for the interior stairs, um, let me get rid of this comment. If I hit numerous stairs, for example, see how I get an inspector note full of illustrations and I get my comment. So I tied multiple things to this one inspector only note. Okay. So um, let me show you how you make an inspector only note like this that does not show up in the report because this is kind of new and cool. If you go under settings and report, or excuse me, uh, observation modifiers, and we'll go open up my inspector only notes modifier. Um, I I have, it's not going to go in the summary. I've excluded it from the summary. I've excluded it from the report. And so what happens when you do that, if you toggle them both off, inspector only notes, observations will not appear in the final report. Is that what you intended? <laughs> We're trying to, we tried to improve this. So it's like, you're absolutely sure that this is how you want it. Um, so does that make sense? So if you want an inspector only note, build a modifier that doesn't go to the summary and is not included in the report. And there's basically nowhere for it to go, right? It's just an inspector note. It's not going anywhere in the finished report. Okay.
Makes sense. That helpful, everybody? And I think it's a really cool tool to have. I mean, I, I definitely hide codes and things that I can't remember in there. I think I have one, I don't know about you guys, but I can never remember the sequence that the water heater elements come on. And so I, uh, I found a little illustration that helps my feeble mind remember these things. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't really see it on mobile very well. It's a little too small. I need a better one. But uh, anyway, that's what I have for now. At least I can look it up. Um, hey, Dylan, I have a question. This is Brett. Yeah. Hey, Brett. Hey there. Um, I'm in Connecticut, and uh, I work for a company. Uh, he's been in conversation with you, my boss, Joe. Um, I don't know if he's on here right now, but I was wondering, you know, if we're transitioning, hopefully to this, um, what is the typical newbie, you know, how long does it take to get comfortable with it going from a, from an older software version after the template is built? Yeah, that's a super good question. Um, I mean, honestly, a bunch of the people on here could maybe answer that for me. I, you know, I, I don't ever remember learning it, if you know what I mean, because I've just sort of like I've been fiddling with it since I built it. If I had to guess, like you would have a couple weeks of pain where you're just kind of like, I, I think one of the first things is if you're using the mobile, it's going to take a little time. I call it learning to dance, just getting accustomed to how things sync. You know, yeah. and, and the syncing works really well right now. I mean, I we're not really getting any, you know, calls on syncing other than like people that just their Internet wasn't working or something. I mean, our syncing is awesome, but it's still like learning to dance. It's this new thing where you're like taking pictures on one device and they have to show up on another. And, you know, you're reliant on Internet. And so there's a little bit of learning curve there. And then I think most of the controls on the app are fairly intuitive. But, you know, you can have several days of work of just kind of like getting comfortable manipulating the app and then you got to get comfortable getting used to how your template's set up you know um yeah and then so, uh, you know I, another hey, big yeah can i jump in here yeah I'm, please I'm, do I, I don't know if i'm like the most recent um transfer but i'm coming over from hip and i've been uh using scribeware for like a week week and a half maybe and i'm still bouncing between both of them um the first time i used this used Scribeware was on a 5,000 square foot house and it took me maybe a half an hour longer on site to get them. I, how I do things is I'll typically go through the exterior lot and grounds um, just with pictures on my phone and then import them. If I have any, um, you know, any defects um, and then I'll go, you know, I'll go up to the roof and then start down and do, I'll usually do a couple of items, two to three items at once. So it'd be like the kitchen and the interior or whatever, and go through and take pictures of all of that and then input onto my phone. And then I do um, touch up or personalization per house at on the laptop at home and flip any pictures the way that they need to be, annotate, that sort of thing. And it probably took me uh, maybe an hour longer at home um then my normal hour and a half um hour roughly an hour and a half on hip um so um i'd say it's not it's not pain free but it's not killing me either mm -hmm. at all so that <laughs> that's pretty great for your first go go at it <laughs> you know i mean it, it's hard learning a new thing you know there's like just all the new little workflows there's just like you know, it reminds me of like if I had to do a home inspection and you took my tool vest away from me, it, it would I would be like in a complete quagmire. Like I wouldn't I'd hardly be able to operate like and whereas with that on, I know where all my stuff is and I don't even have to think about it. So, um, yeah, there's definitely a little bit of pain. But, uh, you know, I think if, if you're if you're not making huge leaps in what you're doing, meaning you're accustomed to using a mobile app already. Uh, you know, I think, um, you know, probably a couple of weeks to like where you start feeling like you're over the hump of learning to dance with the, the, uh, I don't know if anybody else wants to chime in. That was super good feedback from Jeff. Cause he like just started doing it. So thanks for that. When you were saying sinking, what is sinking? <laughs> with the cloud? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, how Scribeware works and you don't have to do this. Like if you're accustomed to using a camera, you can go take pictures of your camera, load them onto Scribeware. And if that's your workflow, 
honestly, I think the learning curve is not going to be very long at all. Like that's, that's pretty simple, but you know, the mobile app is where things are just, you know, it works slightly differently than other mobile apps. Um, but syncing would be, you can go out with your mobile device, take a bunch of pictures and collect data and fill out the report. And then you come back and it's on your desktop, but this involves like internet connection. So you have to get kind of used to, you know, uh, uploading and downloading and just kind of it, and it actually is all designed to happen automatically without you needing to do anything but th there's still kind of a again it to me it feels like learning to dance you just have to get kind of comfortable with it um, when, yeah. once, you, once you're proficient do, do most people do you know 90 percent of the work on the mobile including the pictures and everything and then just touch it up a little bit or how does that Usually Every, everybody could chime in here from my yeah, experience I, I, everybody's I, a bit different yeah why don't you go ahead uh, can you hear me yeah we got you okay James. um so that's pretty much how i started well and me and you kind of first talked about it um i guess i've been about on about six months and so when i first started doing it, because my first inspection took me a long time so how i adjust to make it to where i wasn't there forever i was just on site mostly just taking pictures and making real quick notes and then coming back home and then doing 90% of it on report. And then as I was doing my report, adjusting my template to kind of more uh, what would, what I was used to and more what fit my needs. And so over time, my template started to work with me and how I felt more comfortable and, slower more and more over time i was doing more on site actually reporting and now it's to the point where by the time i get home i'm like 95 percent complete and i'm just going through and making final touches that's and, great and now i'm back to where i was before i started okay. so awesome. it, it does it is a transition at first it did take longer but now uh, i think that was advice you gave me that maybe i should do most of the work at home and that would help me get used to the software and learn the software and then yeah. that's what i started doing and it did take me to kind of a little while to figure out uh it's uh the software and how i want to set up my template now i got my template where i want it and this whole time as i've been using it and at the beginning every time i ran across a comment i wanted to make sure i made a comment make it the way i want it you don't have to do it once and now i got 90% of the comments, and, you know, I still run across those things, nice. you know, almost every inspection. And that's the thing that takes me to time when I get home where I still have to sit there where I have those two or three comments that I want to write up. So the next time I have that, I'll run across that defect. I don't have to rewrite it. It's already there. So. Right. Right. So that's helpful. Yeah. Thank you. And I think that's, yeah, that's how good. it, it that's, that's such a great story. I mean, I think that's how, all of our templates are right. Even if you've used a template for 20 years, you still go out and find things that are like, Hmm, <laughs> I don't have a comment for that. Or I want to change a comment for that. So um, we do have a flagging feature. So I want to just, can you guys still see my screen? Quick, uh, quick mention about syncing. Yeah. Uh, I know we were just talking about that. Also, it's like if you have two inspectors working within the same report, it'll sync everything at the same time. Right. So it updates that report on the fly. Correct. So if you were if you were all live and like me, like on Wi-Fi in particular, um, I, I've done inspections with a team where I've had a guy upstairs and we have a really good cell connection and I can like watch him fill out the bathroom. I mean, it's it's, you know, it's like, wow, he's there he is. He's doing that. Um, but, you know, that diminishes depending on your Internet connection. <laughs> so oh, yeah. it's, it's all Internet based. Um, and just a little tip, the all the bars you see on your phone are really for how good your your telephone will work. Not that's not necessarily an indication for how much data is getting moved. So there's there's some limits there. But, um, yeah, that's kind of like live syncing. Um, I Alex, let me just for you. Let me just, I just want to show one thing to finish this, but one tip, if you're new and you're using the mobile app and you don't have a comment or you can't find it, rather than spending a lot of time looking for it, my advice is hit add observation, put in a couple pictures and flag it. 
and by ad observation, I mean like go to where they want you want them. You know, like if it's in the hall bath, just go there and you know, and it can be a blank comment and flag it. When you flag it, it'll add to these required field items, so to remind you to go back and check them. But that's a really fast way to keep you moving on site. You've taken the pictures, you've located them where you want them to be, and then when you're back at the desktop, you could go find that. And then if you don't have the comment, you could add it. And then you know we could type in a new comment and come up here and hit add to library uh or you could even edit in library and like tag the new comment with like some numbers or something if you wanted to so that you know that it's your comment um so that might be a really nice habit to get into where and then you know over the over two three weeks you're going to either find the stuff that is built in the template quickly or you'll start filling in the little gaps where 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 they happen to be for you if that makes sense cool are, you able, to, are you able to put uh comments on pictures yeah, yeah. So you can, um, it actually works much better on mobile and desktop. Do you mean write text on the picture? Yes. Yeah, you can do that. The desktop version is not my favorite. Uh, you can go here and you put a text box in. And um, so, you know, it's not terrible, but um, the for some reason, the mobile one is actually faster. But there you can see, I just, I just did it and it works, works pretty well. Uh, so that's, again, how you edit pictures on desktop is just click on it to open it. And then uh, there's all kinds of different things. There's a Sharpie and an eraser, which you probably won't ever use. There's a line. There's a rectangle. There's an ellipse, which is my favorite. And then the text, you can just put something in here and just start typing. Oops. That helpful? Yes, it is. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, one more thing to to add to what Dylan was saying about just taking quick notes in the field is you'll notice on desktop, like if you start to type something, it'll automatically pull up the search. So like if you want to put a comment about something that's disconnected, um, you don't necessarily have to on the phone search for that comment and find it and figure out which one it is and, and add it. Like if you just put in the comment disconnected, then as soon as you get to your computer, having one word in there will automatically prompt it to search. So as soon as you get to that comment, that, that menu will drop down of, you know, all the comments that say that have that word in it. So that's a, I don't use that as much anymore, but I help, that helped out a lot early on of like, I don't want to spend a lot of time finding this comment, but I know I have a comment in the section that has this word in it. Mm -hmm. um, and I would just put that in and, and move on. That's cool advice. Yeah. I have a question regarding syncing. Yep. So coming from HomeGage, they had us get um, tablets that didn't have internet, only Wi-Fi. And a lot of times I'm in a dealer's yard and I don't have Wi-Fi. Um, what are people's best practices? I'm concerned that if I were to drop my tablet, I would lose the entire report. Um, you know, so I, I'm trying to find out what do people do as a backup or should it, do I need to get a, a, a unit with... A, Wi-Fi uh, built in 5G. I, I mean, I, I think the risks are fairly low. Like there's, there's always the risk that you can, you're, you break your device while you're working. I mean, I've done like 7,000 inspections. I don't think I've ever broken a device that I was like lost data while working. It's, I'm sure it's possible, but that seems like an edge case thing to have to worry about too much. Um, but I don't know. Anybody else? What, what does everybody else have thoughts on that? anybody <laughs> i really don't worry about it i go out in the field with just mm -hmm. my phone you know and take take lots of pictures i actually work in airplane mode mostly and that is more to do with voice to text than anything uh has nothing to do with scribeware but i i use uh gboard's voice to text which is really fast when you're in airplane mode for um so that's so I, I work out. So I do, I hang it out there. I risk that like, I'll be able to make my phone back and get it connected and get, get all my data. But yeah. you're right. There is a risk there, but you know, it's also kind of a luxury where like, you know, you actually are out in the field having everything syncing and backing up for you automatically as you go is pretty amazing. I mean, that's pretty new technology. We've been doing inspections for years without that. And as soon as you get back into coverage, you're going to sync up anyway, eventually over time. Yeah. Yeah. And I, for my, uh, We've broken, you know, cracked some screens on some iPads, of course. But I guess if we ever really broke an iPad, 
usually there's two of us on an inspection. So if we ever really broke one, we'd have one guy be able to keep going. But it's at that point, um, you just have to choose another time to reinspect or uh, have a backup device. Has anybody ever had a device like totally die on them where they like couldn't get stuff off of it again? I have. No. I dropped my phone from a roof of an RV. Luckily, I had a second phone and could pick up right from there. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So it can happen. I mean, it's, um, and yeah, if you want to avoid that, I guess just having like a hotspot or something with you. Um, but even the hotspots, if you're really rural, I mean, there's just, what are you going to do? There's no internet, you know, um, I, you probably get like a satellite phone or something, you know, but it's probably not worth it at a certain level. Um, What'd you say as far as you, you put it on airplane mode and then what was the program, the, Yeah, I'll go over that. So I, I, on my app uh, or on my phone, I went to the app store and I got the G board. So um, uh, let's see. Someone's someone trying to get in. I think I got everybody in. Someone sent me an email and I oh, got some people needing to get in. Sorry about that, guys. Um, let's see. So uh, voice to text. Yeah. So. I have a couple tricks for that that really helped me. So I go to the app store and I use Google's version of it of the, a keyboard. It's called the G board. Uh, and I think you have to pay for it. It's like $4 or something. It's not, not all that expensive. Then I wear these aftershocks. So they're like a headset thing that doesn't go in your ear, but sits on the bone of your ear. I, I kind of think it doesn't bother clients so much. To me, it seems kind of rude to have with clients to like have something in your ear. <laughs> and I feel like this, because it sits next to it, I, you know, I like to think I can still talk to him and stuff, but I'm, I really believe that having a better mic closer to you rather than your phone helps with the voice recognition. And in fact, I, I forgot these at home today and my voice to text was not nearly as successful. <laughs> so I do think these help a lot. These are kind of a bummer to buy. They're, you know, a couple hundred bucks or something, but uh, they're actually great. I, you know, you can like ride your bike and go to the gym with them and listen to music and stuff. So, and talk on the phone. Uh, so I like these. Um, and then the final thing about the G board is I don't, you know, if you've ever used talk to text, when you hit the microphone, there's often this lag and it says initializing. And in reality, it's probably only a few seconds, but it, I find it insanely maddening when I just want to like say something. And if when I'm in airplane mode, the initializing goes away. I have almost instantaneous voice to text. Um, so that's kind of that little combination of things has helped me be very successful with voice to text. And I really do, you know, quite a bit of my inspections are voice to text. Um, Again, for me, it's how my brain works is I use a lot of photo captions to bullets for um, any time I find multiple defects with the same system. And so that would, I, I have some examples actually in this this job that I could show you if you guys want me to go down there. But did that answer your question on the voice to text in the airplane mode? Yes, it did. Thanks. Yep. Cool. Do you guys want me to, to show you the, the, the um, uh, talk to text? stuff for the uh the photo captions to bullets it looks like somehow in my zoom controls i managed to draw on my screen <laughs> i have no idea how i managed to do that you guys see the little green line on there yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't know what i touched on zoom in order to do that but uh, i thought that was a new feature yeah <laughs> you can scribble all over your report <laughs> yeah, just what hey, we all uh, need i would uh i would second those aftershocks too i've been using them for a long time and uh just recently with with the scribeware and the voice to text uh, they work great yeah it's a nice combo man i mean i i really it's funny but it, you'd think that it, it's all just works but there are little things and the cumulative effect of all of those has made such a big difference where i can get a lot accomplished with voice to text um, if we look at a bunch of these pictures, like I've, I, I might have captioned some of them. Let's see. Did you call it uh, aftershock? What, what, what's the headphone call? Yeah, aftershocks. I think is what they're called. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and yours do not have the boom mic. I do not have the boom mic. I think that would be kind of a pain for if you're out in the field. Yeah. Yeah. But I still think the mic's way better than just whatever's on your phone. Oh, thank you. Yeah. 
Dylan, if you see George Turner in your waiting room, let him in too. One of my guys trying to get in. Okay. Yeah, I think I let you both in. Sorry about that. I I thought I was monitoring. No, I'm in. I'm okay. in. Great, George. Right. Cool. Yeah, I'm in. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Yeah. So let's see if I. Yeah. So I've got. See how some of these are captioned. So this is how I would roll on my report. I mean, look how easy this is, right? Like. We've got wood trim, we had uh, fiber cement siding, and we also had some shiplap wood siding, and then localized rot repairs. I drag these pictures in, and I can come up here, and I can use a little uh, text replacement to describe where I was finding rot. So in this case, we just found some rot on some trim, I'm going to put my cursor here and use this button with the bullets and the mountains. And that makes a little bulleted list. And so this is my technique for, a, you know, again, how my brain works is multiple defects with the same system. I don't want to have to deliver a report where I say, like, hire somebody to further evaluate and repair the rot, you know, like, and say that like 10 different times. I just want to say it once. <laughs> and so I, I authored a parent comment. And the parent comment is exterior rot repairs. In general, the siding here is an above average condition for age and type of building, but a few rot repairs are needed, right? And that was the idea of this comment is it's just for little localized repairs. You can put your com your cursor there and, uh, you know, just start. And sometimes I have a huge list. Sometimes I reauthor this, but generally, like, if there's a lot of repairs, then um, I might go with either localized siding repairs or a plan is needed. And I think this is a great comment. You guys ever do those siding systems where it's like, boy, this is really complicated. There's a lot of stuff going on. And, and I really like the sort of being like, hey, you need a plan <laughs> here like you because this is complicated. And a uh, plan is needed for the exterior envelope. Overhaul, overall cohesive plan is needed for the exterior envelope is building. There are multiple issues and defects that require repair now or in the near term. Because sometimes you do like those siding where it's like, well, you know, some of these things are okay for a while, but this is a big problem now, and this is a problem now, and this is going to be a problem. You guys ever do those? So I actually think this is a very cool comment that like handles, it does a lot of heavy lifting for me. And then I can just go ahead and put in like however many details I have. And sometimes in my reports, I'll have 20 or 30 bullets, which is probably overkill. You really don't need that many, but um that's just how my brain works. <laughs> um, so. I agree. We, we call it a scope of work. Uh, no, just like the plan that you got there. Uh, it's a good note. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Is the, uh, uh, bullet points. Is that feature on mobile too? It is. You can do that whole thing on mobile. Yep. W what is that? Does it look like the same icon and where is it? Yeah. Let's let me, I think I'm logged in on mobile. I am. Sorry to ask a beginner question for all you experts there. No, that, that's that's the whole the whole point here. Let's see. I need to make myself a co-host. All right, I'm almost there. All right, can you guys see my uh, phone? Yes. Cool. So here's my jobs. We'll go into this copy that I built for today. All right, so let's go to that um, exterior. Well, let me look at my gallery and see see what I got here. Oh, just finished the report and now watching the uh, Zoom meeting oh. on. You know, I'm picking on up software. somebody here. And that'll make it better, work oh. easier. I'm just well, to... I'm probably going to go up either today. All right. I think I got that. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm trying to find a, a good uh, a good photo captions thing to uh, to show you. We 
We could go back to that exterior repair one and I'll rebuild this. just deleting some things to redo it all here to try to like rebuild this. So I'd go ahead and hit that and open it up. And then um, really weird. I have a strange UI on here that I don't usually have. Go find those trim comments. Where are they? Hey there. Well, we'll just go ahead and grab those ones. So you put your cursor wherever you want it, like right here, and then you will not see, you do see how this thing scrolls? Can you guys see that? Everybody picking that up? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yep. Yep. So there's the little button all the way over at the right, and you go ahead and hit that, and that makes the list. Got it. Thank you. I wasn't scrolling. That's why I didn't see it. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Um, Yeah, so any does anybody have any other questions on mobile then while while I have this up? Um or I can go back uh, to the desktop. <laughs> when you take every time you take a picture, you, you then have to hit the X to close it, or is there a faster way? No, you do have to hit that X at the upper right to get out of the camera. You can take as many pictures as you want, so you can keep firing them off. Yeah, but then I you saw have that. To, yeah, you have to exit the, the photo screen. So when you exit it, you hit you close out. Um, why don't I show and everybody then, just as a review all the different ways that you can put uh, pictures into a comment because there are a lot of ways. So how the mobile app works is when you when the, a comment fills up the screen like this one, it doesn't have to be a long comment, but this basically means I'm inside of a comment. So when I'm in a comment, that's how I, I can attach pictures to it. And I've got a bunch of different ways I can do that. So I can hit the camera icon and take pictures. And so I could take a bunch of pictures and they'll be with that comment. I can click the button to the right and that's the gallery. And I could go ahead and choose some pictures and put those into the comment. So now I've got more. That's another way I can add pictures. There's an, a third way, which is super cool. If you see the arrow above the camera, I can swipe up and that swiping up puts me in the, uh, in my camera's native gallery. And so I can go ahead and um, put a bunch of these pictures. So those all came now from my phone. I was able to put those in the report. That makes so, sense. Yeah, question for you on that. As an example, as when I was playing the other day with this, for instance, if I'm working outside on a building, I walk past uh, something at the deck, I might take a picture there that's not in a note yet that would be when i could use that swipe then you know five minutes later i thought okay now i'm going to make some deck comments i could go grab that picture actually for for what you're talking about you just go open up your gallery your scribeware gallery and just be able to grab it from the scribeware gallery okay yeah so whereas um the the reason we built the swipe up really was just because the camera built into the Scribeware app is not as powerful as what's on your, your native phone, you know, particularly the zoom is the one thing that the zoom on your native camera will be better than the, than what we can do in Scribeware. And this is kind of a limitation of all apps. Like you, unless you're Apple computers, Tim could probably explain this better than me, but I think unless you are Apple or Samsung, like you don't have access to the actual camera. So you have to like every app that you use that uses a camera on a device has an interface with it to some degree. 
And so we do face a few limitations. And um, But in order to get around those, you could always use your native camera and zoom in on something and then grab a picture and put it in that way. So it's pretty pretty fast. Um, but that's different from the Scribeware gallery where uh, all, all of the, everything you use in Scribeware using the camera in Scribeware will all be in the Scribeware gallery. Thank you. How do you annotate uh, pictures in the mobile? Yeah, so let's let let me show you that. So look, we've got a comment. We have all these pictures, and I haven't captioned any of them. So let's open this up, and you just click on a picture. And this is what's cool is I see how it says one of nine. I can actually go to all nine pictures now that are all in this comment and just scroll around between them. So this is how I do voice to text. Unfortunately, I can never show it while I'm zooming. The phones don't seem. Let me try it. But localized wood decay was noted at the back deck. Yeah, I can't voice to text while I'm zooming for some reason. Um, but anyway, I hit the little microphone and that's how I roll when I'm not zooming. <laughs> uh, and that's so you can go ahead. You can also type stuff in. Um, uh, so that that really bumps up the efficiency of the uh, bullet points. Then if you can scroll these, annotate them and then hit that bullet button. That's just it. All you need to do is, and so the you, you, the tr the light bulb should be going off, Joe. You build parent comments that are yeah. vague comments where you can put a lot of pictures and captions in. You take a bunch of pictures and dump them with that comment, and then you can open it up and just caption them yeah. all. And all you really need to do is go back and caption. So you could caption the picture, and then here's how you annotate. You see the annotate button there? And you can do arrows, and you can do circles. Now, in my, what we tried to design Scribeware for was to have, and by the way, you could, there's more stuff here. There's some different colors and you can rotate the pictures, which is kind of good. So we have some nice tools. In general, we decided, we designed the desktop photo annotation to try to be pretty rich and powerful. And we designed the mobile photo annotation to try to be as fast as possible. Those were kind of our metrics, if that makes sense. So if you're really looking for like powerful photo annotations, I would lean towards desktop. If you want to do them quickly, I, we like to think that the mobile works pretty pretty good for fast, right? You can just go boom, boom, and, and move on to the next one. How are you moving that circle? Uh, I'll go to another one. So annotate hit the circle and then you just sort of drag it around or resize it with the little buttons. Okay. It'll keep moving and until you hit the little check mark at the upper right. Then it saves it at that point. And you can also with those, you can use two fingers and you can rotate it, um, which is really nice on mobile. Um, yeah, that's kind of cool. It's like if you have an oblong shape that are your, you know, your picture, whatever you're trying to take it of is, is at an angle you can, you know, change it. It's harder to resize once you've rotated it. So you usually have to get the size right first and then rotate. Um, but you can get some very specific pictures that way. And but then it's... when you're captioning, you just got to be careful not to try to caption every photo because you might end up with the same caption over and over again if you just got a group of the same stuff that's multiple decay issues, for instance. Yeah, one it, photo is plenty, and then you just include all the others. Th that's a good point, Martin. A good technique for if you're using the photo captions to bullets. Once I have done a photo caption to describe a, a situation, if I have multiple photos that are the same, I don't caption each one. You know, I might put the photos in, but I just use one caption. That's a good point. The other thing about photo captions, let me go to my deck section real quick, um, and. We'll just work on a comment here. So, you know, Joe, like with this whole photo, the, the whole um, parent comment thing, I only have five deck comments that I use. Tune-up repairs needed, old deck repair replace, old deck rebuilding needed, new deck looks professional, new deck repairs needed. And in my experience, almost every deck you're going to find fits into one of those five categories. <laughs> so cool. I only have five deck comments. So we could do tune up repairs and open it up. And we could, I'm going to grab some pictures from the mobile 
or from the the scribeware gallery so i'll hit the button just to the right of the camera now i'm in my gallery notice how i'm in the in the gallery now there's no little circles i need to kind of hold to get the circles but once you get the circles i could start adding a bunch of pictures so now i've got all these pictures in this comment and now i'm going to open up the pictures you can also use this magnifying glass for pre-made captions so if i start typing in the word bolt and then hit that magnifying glass, it's going to go look for pre-made photo captions. So in Scribeware, you can have a library of comments that uh, is distinguished, right? You can have full narratives or you can have photo captions. And so uh, the deck ledger board has, oops, I didn't want that one. I know another shortcut right, right there. What's that, Donnie? You can... Uh... I don't know about your uh, G board, but on an iPhone, you can pre-program a lot of about 10 or 15 of your favorite things and use a three letter code and it'll bring them up instantly. Yeah. That would actually be super smart. Does anybody do that? I could see Tim doing something like that. Tim, do you do that? <laughs> uh, I used to, Okay, um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, you I can do it on the dictionary. I'm I can set up and type C O N and it will recommend a contract. That's and pretty type cool. The whole type of That's super cool. And what do you use for that, Donnie? Do you use like a another program for it's, that or it's just the one that's on the iPhone. It's just on the iPhone? Okay. Yeah. I don't I'm remember a... what it's called, but it's in settings. Are these media captions in a specific location where you add them or are they just where all captions are? Uh, they are sorted. You add them and save them on your desktop, and I can show you how to do that. And they are organized per section. Okay, cool. So you, the idea would be like a global caption search is going to be a pain because then you just have too many damn things to look through. <laughs> so we try to organize them per per section. Okay. So you see how I'm doing that? Like I'm just typing in, um, um you know, uh, different keywords and it's then i hit the magnifying glass and it's going and look for looking for them yes lateral load tension ties so anyway and then once you have a bunch of things you put your cursor there hit the little button and now i've made my whole list right so i was able to do that whole photo captions to bullets and everything on the mobile and then I usually flag those ones so that when I'm on desktop, I can kind of review them. Particularly, I mean, I love voice to text, but you got to be careful. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I flag them and then make sure that I'm not saying something that I shouldn't say. <laughs> or it gets trans, uh, not, <laughs> not coded properly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, so, okay, you want me to log out on this for a minute and just show you guys how you make photo captions in, in your library? Would that be helpful? Yes. yes. All right. Let me. All right. You guys, see my desktop. Yes. Okay. So I'll go. To, I'm in my water heaters. And I will go to view library here at the bottom of the water heater section. And now I'm in my library in my water heaters section only. And uh, I can um, show all, show media captions only, or show observations only. So let's show media captions. And you can see I've got a number of different things here, you know. Um, and I could add another one. Um, so I'll hit the plus mark up here. And I've already got this as a media caption checked. Um, the expansion tank no longer has a proper air charge. And we'll add as a new library entry. So it's that simple. You can just kind of fire them off. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, you can also add them like live while you're working. So uh, if I click this picture and open it, uh, the expansion 
Sorry, it's so hard to type and talk at the same tank uh, is waterlogged. Right, and then I can go ahead and you come up to the three dots here and add it to the library. So there's multiple ways that you could add photo captions to your library, both like live and in a while you're working or just intentionally by going into the library, going into a section and uh, hitting show media captions only and hit the plus mark. Dylan, the one you took uh, from the picture, you just started that like a regular annotation, but then added to the library? Yeah, that's right. You'll see three dots at the right side, and that's how you add it to the library. Yeah. Got it. Cool. Um, this would also be a good way to go in and say, from time to time, clean up your captions, right? Yeah, you could go in there. If, if there's some you don't want, you could delete them, and you can search through them, right? So you could search through... Um, expansion right i could type in expansion and i kind of figured i didn't have any so i i've just added those and now they're there <laughs> those are my only two expansion tank uh photo captions but it, this is really interesting a lot of people that come over from hip have libraries i've noticed that to me their library is much more like how i think of a photo caption <laughs> You know, they're not like full long, they're just like one sentence things. And, and that's cool. But if you want to, you can actually like turn them into photo captions if you want. It, it's, it's, there's so many different ways you could set this up. But the photo captions become very powerful in Scribeware if you really like that idea of, um, of sort of the parent comment. Um, and, uh, yeah. Can you go back to that library screen? Yeah. What is the uh, checkbox that says narrative water heaters on the right? Oh. Yeah, so yeah. this is the library category that they're coming from. So this is some big picture stuff. So the library categories are pretty powerful in Scribeware. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll, I'm going to edit the library category list. So if I click this, these are all of the library categories that I have in my narrative template. And so um, I meant to have them be all these just narrative, but over the time I've kind of expanded. But, you know, I, I this is it. This is everything. And what a library category is, is a folder of comments. So I have narrative exterior stairs. If I click on that, I'm going to go in and it's like I've got 64 stair comments here. You know, and then you could go back in and edit the category list. What's neat about this is let's say you were building a new template, then um, you have the ability. So by default, you see these three dots. This is where I'm looking at the cat edit the category list. Um, if I hit show all categories, I'm actually going to see essentially every single thing that you have in Scribeware becomes available. So now it's not just global within a template, it's global between templates. The reason we've put so much architecture into this is if you're like, I mean, my problem is I'm not only dealing with all my templates, but I'm like building templates for other people and stuff. So I have so many stupid templates on my Scribeware account, it's sort of out of control. So if I hit show all library categories, um, my and then I clear everything. So if I get rid of this, so that it's not just my exterior stairs, it, it takes Scribeware a while to think about it because there could be like literally fifteen thousand comments or something that it's trying to look through. And I have these like millions of gunny sacks, and you see how it, like it can hardly keep up with loading. So you know, most of you, this isn't really an issue. You're dealing with one or two or three templates, and it, it's not quite as bad. But you know, mine is. I've just got. So much freaking stuff in mind. Um, but the library categories are super cool. You can come back up here and uncheck show all categories and it becomes more manageable. But let's just say, for example, I hit show all categories. So now I've got this global thing going on. And let's say in my water heater section here, I want to pull in some comments from another template. I can actually go and I can edit this category up here. Right. So I'm going to edit my section. 
And so it turns it green and you can edit the library category. And so because I have the global thing, sorry, there's a funny UI at the top. I keep meaning to tell Steve about that. Um, but you can actually like, I have two different things attached here. I've got narrative plumbing and narrative water heater, but you know, this, here's a bunch of like gunny sack comments that I have. And if I wanted 31 entries there, I just click that. And then all of those comments would be available in my water heater section. So because I had show all categories checked, I have like all kinds of different folders of comments from other templates that are now available to me to connect here. Does that make sense, everybody? I mean, this this is like the, probably the most complicated thing of Scribeware here is like library categories. And we built it all so that it could be extremely flexible, um, which it is, but it it is definitely one of the more like, you know, complicated things. But it's like, once you get your head around, it's pretty simple. So in that example, if I was, uh, when we build our mold template out or a commercial, we want to take stuff from the residential template. That's the way to do that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yep. That's exactly why we built those is that you can then, you know, just visualize in Scribeware, your comments exist in different folders and you can actually really fiddle with them. So let me, uh, open this again. I'm going to uncheck show all categories. And I'm going to edit my category list. Um, oops, it looks like it didn't uncheck them. But let's just say I wanted these two these three categories to all become one category now. You could merge them together and make, you know, then I'd have, what, 87, 90, 102 um, uh, comments in one, one comment or in one folder. So you can merge them. You could go ahead and delete them if you wanted. Uh, so there's, uh, and then you can come down here and you can add new categories. So, Quick question. yeah, Donnie, if I merge a bunch and screw it up, can I unmerge them? No, that's a good question. So I would be careful with the merge. Uh, I mean, you can unmerge them, but how you would unmerge them is you would, um, you would have to go into them to manually unmerge them, meaning you'd have to, you know, go do a keyword search for, you know, lap siding or something. I wonder if anything will show up here. And then go ahead and you could actually check all of them. So you see how I just basically in this, in, in this category, I did lap siding. It found all the lap siding. I hit this box, so I checked all of them. And then you, I could move them or copy them to a different place. So that's how you would kind of unmerge them. Does that make sense, Donnie? Yeah, I'm just gonna play with some of that and not able to screw up too bad. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, I, th this one's a little like, it, this gets heady, you know, like it, it it it's super cool. It's a really powerful thing, but it's a little, you know. So, uh, you know, so what you could do then is like, let's say we were to uh, copy these then it's saying, well, where do you want to copy them into? You know, and so I could choose another folder. The thing that I would have needed to do is make a folder ahead of time that it says something like, I think I could do it. You can add a new category and you could call it lap siding. Add the category. And then if I hit OK, I would have merged all that stuff into lap siding. Let's see if it worked probably thinking about it still yeah there's lap siding and there's those comments <laughs> so it's actually not that hard to unmerge it it's uh i've never i don't think i've ever done that before but if that makes sense that's kind of what how i how i was able to move things around so it's not once you get your head around it it's not too hard to like get your comments into groups and move them into different and different things. And this is for people really that are deep into like building their own templates. Everybody with me still? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Great. Nobody's fell asleep or anything. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, how are we doing on time? We still got like, t I, I got a jet at three 30, but I got like 20 more minutes. Anybody have any other questions on things or I could stuff I could show. I have a question that's unrelated mm -hmm. to this, but I just, I had a client call with a follow-up question. And I want to go back and look at my photos. 
Um, is there a way to access the report directory outside of just reopening the report and going back into it? Is there a way to access the report without going into it? You mean like yeah. from the home screen or? Yeah, well, well yeah, like so, um, you know, how in the report on the cover section, there's the the report directory. Um, you know, there's the little line where you click on that and it just opens up. Yeah, if you scroll down, yeah, right down there, the report directory. So if you click on that and like just to access photos, because Sometimes as I'm going through photos on the thumbnails, you know, I'll open them externally and look at them, but sometimes it's nice to just click through, click through them on a photo viewer. I see what you're saying. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, that's how you do it on, on desktop. Yeah. You would yeah, click. That's what I'm asking about is desktop. Yeah. Actually. So just, the, the, um, the report directory is powerful, right? This is every picture that I used in this particular job and it exists on a folder. Mm -hmm. So that's the easiest way to just see all your pictures and you could open them and start like scrolling from one to another. Um, yeah. And so like you're going through Scriber to do that. You can't just go through that. I mean, that I folder, folder actually exists on your computer, yeah. but unfortunately we have like an auto naming system that you don't yeah. want to disrupt because Scribeware automatically talks to that folder. And okay. if you go to that folder and rename it, you know, 1313 Nolta or whatever, you'll, you, you screwed things up. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, but that yeah, this so that's how you find that folder, unfortunately. But it, I mean, in theory, you could go to it. You just would have a difficult time finding it, right? You'd have to keep like, oh, because it's not it's not tied to an address or a name. Right, 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 right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And one yeah, thing yeah. that we yeah. have been wanting to improve would just be, I'd like to be able to not need to open the report to see the published report. And so I want to add that to the home screen so that um, you could be able to click maybe you can now download for offline editing i don't even know what that means tim might know <laughs> it, it doesn't do a lot but copy report link is what you're looking for that's new and you can you can just paste that into the browser oh cool um, so you can cop that's what i thought yeah so you copy I tried that download thing but i didn't see where it put the document it doesn't oh, okay I, yeah I, i'm not sure exactly what it does but it doesn't do what you'd expect yeah okay oh um, and, and this, I got this, you guys, by right-clicking. Copy client information to a new template is helpful if if you started a report and you either chose the wrong template or you um, uh, wanted to also add like a sewer scope or something in another template. So then I could click that and it'll say, well, what template do I want to use? And I could go to the sewer inspection template and then it would just like create it's creating a whole new report. Sometimes people get confused and they think that it's copy report and it's not. It brought over the, the cover page and it's got all of the client information. Um, mm -hmm. But it just, it, it didn't like it, it left my old job and just basically built a new job with the client information. If that makes sense, that is different than the copy report button I showed earlier that, um, you know, copy report is really designed to like make an exact copy of everything. And then Alex, to add one thing to your question. So those uh, six digit numerical codes, um, it's also the code in the URL of the report. So if you do open that document, Scribeware reports, whatever that uh, folder is, um, if you don't want to go into Scribeware, but you have the report pulled up, you can just look at the last six digits on the URL and then pick that folder um, oh, out, interesting. Of, the, okay, out yeah. of the document okay. Scribeware. Thanks, cool, Adam. Yeah, that's good to know. All right. Anybody else with some questions? We guys, are, this has been a good meeting. You guys had good questions today. I got one. Yeah, shoot. So for starting out on mobile for a job, um, am I going to want to be hitting, like I've got the template saved um, at the top of this screen that's that you have showing us right now, um, mm -hmm. just um, on mobile. Am I going to want to open up that template? Or am I going to want to click on the blue plus and then go to click on the blue plus and hit create. Okay. The, yeah. And then, and then just create the template you want. Okay. Yeah. And that'll be, that'll be the last one that I changed. 
as long as uh yeah so let me let's go over how templates work because that's really the crux of this question so templates and scribeware are so simple that it's complicated <laughs> uh, I, I find people really struggle with this so um what i have done i think part of it is the word template is really like scribeware is much more fluid than that right so if it, to me when i hit template what i want is give me a starting place that is like the starting place that I want to start a job. Does that make sense? Like I don't, I really don't want the word template because I can start a job and I can add four sub panels and six bathrooms and I can like add all this stuff. So to me, the word template feels like it's so locked in place. And so if I go ahead and I create from template and I start my um, narrative style report, we'll, we'll start a new one. You know, I can add, sub panels and bathrooms and it's it's not locked in place and as long as i never hit save template you know all these sub panels and bathrooms and things that i add are not going to be available to me the next time right they're, they're just for this one job Is everybody with me on that so far like so you can modify the template you don't ever need to hit save template and all you're doing is just modifying it for that one job and just like working in Google Docs or whatever, you don't need to hit save. It's just auto saving everything. So the only working time. Yeah. yeah, the only time you ever need to save something in Scribeware is if you want to reuse it. So that would be a library comment or a template. Like if you want to, you know, so the template is then you, when you hit save template, what you're telling Scribeware is the next time I start a narrative style template, I want you to make it look exactly like this job. Let me explain that one more time. <laughs> then, you know, when I hit save template and I call this particular job narrative style, then the, the next time it makes uh, the narrative style report, it will build an exact copy of this job. Now, what's in a template would be the names and sequence of the chapters, the names and sequence of the sections, and it would be, you know, whatever's in these pull downs, and it would be. You know, any inspector only notes and little links that you built. Those are all template saves. So I do not like to make a template save if I'm working on a live job. And the reason is I probably manipulated the template for a live job by adding decks and things that I don't necessarily want every time I start a new job. So what I like to do is I take a job and I put it out in the future. And that way it sits at the top of my home screen always. So uh, I'm up here. These are all these different, and all these are as a job. There's nothing special about them. But what I like to do is under the job, I under client name, I put in, you know, basically the, the same name that I would have name the template. And that way from the home screen, I can kind of see, all right, this is the job that I, you know, if I want to mess with my narrative style report, I'm going to go into this one. Uh, and then I could make some changes as I want, and I hit save template. Uh, and I could fork the template at this point. I could call it narrative 2.0, and now you'd have two narrative templates, you know, or I can just keep the same name. And, and, um, but basically, like now I have called this particular job my narrative style template. And anytime I want to create a new one, it's just going to build a copy of that. Now, to give you some sense of how hard it would be to actually deeply corrupt, let's say I went into this job and I made all kinds of horrible mistakes and I ruined my template. I could always go to like, if I could go back to any given day, like Wednesday, and I could be like, you know what? I like my template way better on Wednesday. I could open it up. I could hit save template. And if I don't rename it, I call it narrative style. Scribeware is going to say, hey, this was the one that when you when you want a narrative style template, it'll look like this one. <laughs> Does, does that make sense? Like, it's actually really hard to, like, really mess up your template in the sense that every single job you've done has the potential to become your template. You could, like, go back in time and find one that you really liked and make that your template or rename it and call it a new template. If I lost <laughs> anybody, <laughs> I wish no. there was... Is it, are you guys, everybody with me? Can I get some amens yeah. and hallelujahs? Gotcha, gotcha. Makes sense. Good. All right, cool. <laughs> um, 
<clears throat> I know it's a, it's funny. It's like it's actually really simple, but I I have the hardest time describing it. And and I've been with you. Like I, I understand why it's kind of confusing in this. So so you know. for us, like I'm pretty new to this, so um, I haven't used it for home inspections yet, and I'm still building a template out with for balcony stuff. And hopefully, you and I can get together soon. Uh, uh, Yeah, we got to we got to talk, Martin. I've got some ideas yeah. for you. Okay. Um. I. Uh, I think for us, the way we like to do things is just have an example. It's just a guideline and flow for how you do your inspections as as a as a you know as an inspector. So I think just having one type of each element within an inspection, like roofs, you know, plumbing, all that stuff, with whatever it is, you have, whatever is it that you inspect, at least have one in every in every whatever if you're going to call it a template, um, and that way you can just duplicate or remove it on the fly as you need, so making your inspection quicker Yeah, and the cool thing about Scribeware is you actually don't really need to remove things ever. So the cool thing about the logic of Scribeware is if you don't put data into a chapter or section, it won't print in the report. okay And so, like, let's just say, for example, in my template, I'm doing a job and there's only two bathrooms, a main bathroom and a hall bathroom. Well, I can open up powder, I can just ignore them and they won't print in the report. But the one... Uh, hiccup is I have my required fields in here. So what do I do? I've got these 196 items. Well, I can just turn them green and that will make those required fields go away. And because there's no data in there, those won't print in the report. So that's kind of the, a great way to like keep your required fields really relevant. Let's say the house also doesn't have a crawl space. So I just come here and click crawl space and it's basically gone. I mean, it, it's a cool thing. It's still there. I can use it. Yeah, Donnie, go ahead. You had a comment I'm still in favor of being able to pre-check them. yeah that's a feature And how donnie's would you asked do for that i think other people have don't you guys like the idea of you could create a template that by default has the crawl space green meaning like you know you don't see a crawl space much so you could have it basically already off and then you just if you want it you come and turn it on Yeah. don't you guys like that idea Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be much, I think Donnie, it, it, you know, Donnie's team does a lot of uh, ancillary services things. And if you have a lot of those, then they would kind of clutter stuff up and it would be much nicer to sort of have them off. And then all you need to do is kind of turn them on essentially. Um, yeah. But I like that, Donnie. Yeah. It's on the list. It's high on the list. <laughs> a lot of things are on the list, but. <laughs> And the pull down menu, we're good. Yeah, we'll we'll get there. <laughs> um, no, that would be super cool. The other feature that Donnie has requested that I think would be great is the ability to um, make it so that, I mean, I like that you can rename everything up here. So I could call this, you know, um, garage bathroom, right? So that's super convenient. But it would be really nice if you could make a, a list that you could click on so that you could then like have a bunch of pre-saved bathrooms up there. Yeah, Wayne's giving the thumbs up. I know That's that. a great idea. I like that. Yep. Yeah, So it would it would be really nice on mobile too. this What might it be does a good is time to it's also it uh, makes indicate. everything print out on it. So Say that again, Donnie, and then we'll get Wayne going. Uh, the big thing is, is if you don't name them right, when it falls into the summary, the summary don't know which bathroom to tell it. You if you don't type it in. So on the mobile, if you just had a button, click, click. move on then when it you have a you know a defect or a fault or a repair then the summary knows which one it is it's easy to for the repair Yeah, yeah. request list Yep. For the request list. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's, um, it's interesting. I, I gotta, I don't know. That's not quite at the top of our list. That's not as urgent as some other things, but it's on the list. It would be really nice to, if you could make, make pre-made ones. I think part of the UI trick for Steve is that you have to have a place to save them and you need to be able to overwrite them and add weird ones, which, you know, it's all doable, but it's just been a little complicated. I think it's one of those things that's slightly harder than one imagines, but in What any event. what what I was doing, and sorry to jump jump the line here, Wayne, but it's on this topic is um, what I was thinking about doing, and I I don't know if this will work or not. That's why I'm asking. Is I just have a header that says all bathrooms, and then I was going to come in and you know just say there's like a damaged floor, and so we're talking about the floor for all of the bathrooms, 
and then having that yellow where you can jump to like and then it would say main bathroom guest bathroom family bathroom mm -hmm. primary bathroom yeah that would that, that then work. show up would that then show up in the in the request list it would show up on the request list but it, on the summary page they wouldn't be distinguished you know the summary page would would probably say you know all bathrooms or whatever and then that comment would be in there but you would have it labeled with the text replacement yeah that makes okay. sense yeah that's fine because i'm not i just don't like having i, I, five I should show seconds. this real quick because the, the, i'm sorry wayne we're get we're going i know you wanted to say something we're, we're going off on this but um let's see oh i know where it was uh under report templates this is an important setting uh, when you whatever you send to the summary page, you can include the chapter names in the summary page and you can include the section names or either or. But if you want to fiddle with your summary page, that's kind of helpful. So by having both, for example, if I have a chimney comment, the chimney is in my roofing section. So my summary would say, you know, roofing chimney and then have the comment. So I really like we added this somewhat recently, and I think it's a really nice improvement that you can have both the chapter name and the section name uh, in the in the sum show up in the summary. So, all right, Wayne, I think we're ready for you. <laughs> so um, you have a feature uh, request list, and for those that are looking for this, uh, could you share that? Yeah, that is in our forum, I believe, right at the top of the forum, isn't it? Let me try to find I it. go to an email. Here, hang on. I, I think I can get us there. I don't know if Tim's still on here. Tim might know where it is, but... Um... He left. If, if you guys want, you can join the Scribers Forum. And I think it was at the top of the forum in one of these things. Feedback. I'm pretty sure that's it. Is that the one? Yeah. So I think this is where you can... Uh, isn't this the, the one, Wayne? Or Yes, it is. Yeah. So you can write a description of what you what you want and then create a post. And you can actually go through and read all of these and vote on them and stuff. It's really pretty cool. Um, so you might have a look at that. I'm glad you brought that up, Wayne. So and if you go to this. for those this, that you just mentioned. Yeah. It, I mean, and Steve really <laughs> does when he's not like, you know, <laughs> completely buried that we use this and try to add the features. It helps us understand what people want the most. Um, and so, yeah, Scribeware feedback uh, right at the top of the in the forum there. Thanks, Wayne, for bringing that up. Thank you. When, when you're doing um, tree listing inspections, could um, the homeowner or um, agent use the repair request list for items that they've repaired and sure. email that to you and send that to you? Yeah. And, Okay. And then I'll use that list to go off of. That's what I try to get them to do. Sometimes they won't do it, okay. but I that's my preferred way is I'm like, well, use my tool, give me a list of what you fixed that and that's the list that I'm going to use to reinspect it. Because it's a PDF, you can attach it too as an attachment to the report and be like, here's the list that I was told to reinspect, you know. Okay. Well, so what and then they can include pictures or receipts for work done. Uh that's they can't thing. add new pictures to that. Um, but they but, could well, just in a separate email, I guess. Or yeah, they the, could give the you a separate email, email with receipts okay. and add pictures and stuff. Yep. Okay, great. Yeah, we're going to be doing some work that should help reinspections as well. Uh, Donnie and I have been talking about this a bit that would help him. I, I should, I'll go over this and then I, I need to get out of here in a minute, but um. Currently, if uh, we originally built Scribeware so that you could integrate a pest inspection and embed it automatically into your report with this little button. So like if this were uh, related to a pest inspection, I can essentially tag this observation. And then if we go look at one of my finished reports, it actually automatically generates a separate pest summary. 
which is really pretty cool. I don't have to do anything other than hit the little pest icon and it goes ahead and builds a separate list. So I'm opening this up and we'll go to this link and I'll drag this over. And here's the report and see how at the bottom I've got pest summary. And I didn't have to do a darn thing other than make sure my little pest icon was toggled there. And if I click that, it's actually a completely different URL. So it's like a whole other report. And I've got a separate little header here about wood destroying organisms and only the little pest icon. You know, there's just a few things in it. So I think this is super cool. I've always really liked it, but it's always been limited to just pest inspections. And the feature that I've wanted for a long time is the ability to make it so that we every inspection company could build their own little things that they could tag comments with. So I'm visualizing this, then you could start having a list of different things and it could be safety items. It could be electrical items. It could be reinspection items, you know, and you could have these different ways of tagging uh, a narrative. I think ideally you'd be able to tag it with multiple different things. So it could be an electrical and a reinspection item, right? Um, but then when you publish the report, you would auto generate a number of different summary pages. So you could then take the electrical one and send that to the electrician, the plumbing one, send it to the plumber. Um, you could take the safety items and that's what the realtors might fuss about. So uh, Donnie was uh, a big fan of this and he and I have been talking a lot about it. So I, I, I'm pretty sure this will happen relatively soon. We've got a bunch of people that really, we have a couple of companies that do and I just feel so bad for them. They do a lot of reinspections. <laughs> it's like, to me, it's like, shoot me, you know? Um, but in any event, uh, if you have to do a lot of them, I think that feature would be super helpful for reinspections. Um, I've tried one uh, the day before yesterday on a reinspect. I took a template and made it completely blank and then took the, the list and just added the repair items in and printed mm -hmm. it. I published it just like that. So you started with a blank report? Yes. And then what did, did you copy and paste? I had nine items, and I just put those nine items in, what was fixed and what worked, marked the, one, the three that weren't done satisfactory, and published it and done. Went great. Ah, that's pretty cool. So how did you get those nine items in there? I, well, I just made them up. As, I got on my phone, and what I got there, I took a picture, Tagged it, listed it, and put it under the heading where that it was at, and done. That's cool, Donnie. Sure We're out of time today, but you'll have to show right. us that next time. I like that. That's a super Work good idea. Good. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, what the thing I love about these meetups is like that. This is a very creative, powerful tool, and I love how people like do different things. I'm like, wow, that's a great idea. <laughs> I've never thought of that. Uh, so I love that. I'd like to see that. Maybe. Uh, you could show us when we show up next time. That'd be super cool. I'll see you next week anyway. You show me how to attach a PDF. Cool. Yeah, we'll hook up. We're going to be at, in uh, Galveston. Anybody else going to be in Galveston? I don't think there's other IGO guys on here right now. But you talk uh, to me about IGO. Then I'll leave <laughs> it at that. Get my two cents in. I love it. That's great. Gonna grow your business anyway. Yeah. Thank you, Dylan. No, it's great seeing you, Donnie, and good seeing everybody on here. Thank you so much. I hope you guys got some Thank good stuff. We, uh, I'm trying to record this, so I'll try to get it up on Facebook and YouTube uh, in the next week or something. I'll, I'll do my.